Have you ever looked up at the night sky, at the countless stars and galaxies, and felt an overwhelming sense of wonder? Beyond the how of the Big Bang, lies an even more profound question, why is there anything at all, rather than nothing? Join us on an epic journey to explore the deepest mystery of existence. This isn't just a philosophical musing, it's a fundamental puzzle that science, philosophy, and even spirituality have grappled with for millennia. The question isn't how the universe started, but why the very fabric of reality, space, time, and matter, exists in the first place. It forces us to confront the very nature of being. To truly grasp the why, we first need to consider the alternative, absolute nothingness. Imagine a state where there is no space, no time, no matter, no energy, not even laws of physics or concepts themselves, literally nothing at all. Can such a state even be conceived, let alone be stable? Modern physics challenges the very notion of this pure void, suggesting that even what we perceive as empty space is teeming with activity. Quantum fields are constantly fluctuating, particles popping in and out of existence, making true nothingness an elusive concept. It seems nothing is inherently unstable, prone to bubbling into something. So, if nothing isn't truly nothing, does that make the emergence of something inevitable? This leads to the intriguing idea that the universe, or some form of existence, might be a fundamental necessity, not a contingent event. The laws governing the quantum realm could inherently forbid true non-existence. Our best scientific model for the universe's origin is the Big Bang, which describes how the universe expanded from an extremely hot, dense state. It beautifully explains the evolution of galaxies, stars, and planets, giving us a how for our current cosmos. But it doesn't quite answer the why of the initial singularity. The Big Bang theory describes what happened after the initial moment, but it doesn't fully explain the origin of that singularity itself. Was it a point of infinite density, or the remnant of something else? The physics we know breaks down at that extreme, leaving us with a conceptual wall before creation. To address some of the Big Bang's puzzles, such as the universe's remarkable homogeneity and flatness, the theory of cosmic inflation was proposed. This posits an extremely rapid, exponential expansion in the first fractions of a second, stretching out any initial irregularities and creating the vast, uniform cosmos we observe. Even if inflation explains the early universe's properties, the question of what kick-started it persists. One intriguing idea comes from quantum mechanics, quantum fluctuations. In the vacuum of space, tiny, spontaneous energy fluctuations can momentarily create particle-antiparticle pairs that vanish almost instantly. Could one of these fleeting quantum fluctuations have been just large enough, just energetic enough, to inflate into an entire universe? This concept suggests that the universe could have emerged from nothing, or rather, from the inherent instability and energy of the quantum vacuum itself. If universes can spontaneously arise from quantum fluctuations, then our universe might not be unique. This leads to the multiverse hypothesis, an infinite ensemble of universes, each with potentially different physical laws and constants. It's a vast cosmic landscape of possibility. The multiverse hypothesis offers a potential answer to the why by shifting it. If countless universes exist, then it's no longer so surprising that one of them, like ours, has the precise conditions for life. The why us becomes why not one of them. Yet, the idea of an accidental, statistical universe emerging from a multiverse clashes with the remarkable fine-tuning observed in our own. The fundamental constants of physics, like the strength of gravity or the mass of an electron, seem exquisitely calibrated for the existence of stars, planets, and life. The fine-tuning suggests that if these constants were even slightly different, the universe would be radically different, perhaps a barren expanse of only hydrogen, or collapsing instantly. The anthropic principle attempts to address this by stating that our existence constrains the observed properties of the universe. The weak anthropic principle simply notes that we must observe a universe compatible with our existence, while the strong version suggests the universe must be such that observers can arise. This doesn't explain why it's so, but rather, highlights the unique properties that allow us to ask the question at all. This leads us to another profound query, are the laws of physics themselves fundamental, pre-existing concepts, or are they emergent properties of the universe itself? 
Do these laws exist even in the absence of a universe, dictating its potential, or do they only come into being with existence? Some theories propose that the universe is inherently mathematical, that reality itself is a mathematical structure. In this view, existence isn't a thing that came into being, but rather, a self-consistent mathematical concept that simply is. It doesn't need a why because its existence is tautological. This idea finds support in the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in describing the physical world. From quantum mechanics to cosmology, mathematical equations perfectly predict and explain phenomena, suggesting an underlying mathematical order to everything. But why this order, and not some other? Moving from science to philosophy, the concept of causality has long been central to the existence question. Everything we observe has a cause, the universe seems to follow this rule. So, what caused the universe? This inevitably leads to the idea of a first cause. The Kalam cosmological argument, for example, posits that whatever begins to exist has a cause, the universe began to exist, therefore, the universe has a cause. This cause must then be uncaused, eternal, and powerful enough to bring the universe into being. Another philosophical angle is the distinction between contingent and necessary existence. Contingent things depend on something else for their existence, like a tree depending on a seed, soil, and sun. Necessary things, however, exist by their very nature, they could not not exist. If the universe is contingent, dependent on an external cause, then this cause must either be an infinite regress of contingent causes, which seems unsatisfactory, or ultimately, a necessary being. This necessary being would be the bedrock of all existence, requiring no external explanation. The question of the universe's existence also forces us to grapple with the nature of time itself. Did time begin with the Big Bang, or was there some form of pretemporal reality? If time started with the universe, then concepts like before the universe lose their meaning. Some theories suggest time isn't a fundamental, pre-existing dimension, but rather an emergent property of the universe itself, perhaps arising from quantum entanglement or the increasing entropy of the cosmos. In this view, asking what happened before is like asking what's north of the North Pole. Could the universe exist because information itself is fundamental? Some physicists propose that reality isn't ultimately made of matter or energy, but of information, the bits that define what is. From this perspective, existence is the processing of information. John Wheeler famously coined the phrase it from bit, suggesting that every physical it, every particle, every field, derives its existence, its meaning, entirely from the answer to a yes-no question, from binary information. In this view, the universe exists as a gigantic, self-configuring computation. This leads to an even more provocative idea, does consciousness play a role in existence? Some interpretations of quantum mechanics suggest that observation itself collapses possibilities into reality, implying that the universe might require an observer to fully exist in a concrete form. The participatory universe theory goes further, proposing that reality is not merely observed by consciousness, but that consciousness is integral to the universe's very being. The why might then be tied to the emergence of conscious observers capable of asking the question. Returning to the scientific frontier, the theory of eternal inflation suggests that inflation never truly ends, but instead produces an endless succession of bubble universes, each potentially representing a Big Bang. This creates an infinite, ever-expanding multiverse, perpetually generating new realities. Another cosmological idea is the cyclic universe, where the cosmos undergoes an endless series of Big Bangs and Big Crunches, constantly collapsing and re-expanding. This eliminates the need for a singular beginning, proposing an eternal, self-renewing existence. String theory and its extension, M-theory, offer even more exotic possibilities, like brain cosmology. Here, our entire universe is just a brain, a multi-dimensional membrane, floating in a higher dimensional bulk space. In this brain cosmology, the Big Bang might not be the absolute beginning, but rather the result of two such brains colliding in the bulk, generating the immense energy and matter that inflated our universe. It's a cosmic impact that births reality. One of the most mind-bending theories, 
the simulation hypothesis, proposes that our reality is actually a sophisticated computer simulation, perhaps run by a much more advanced civilization. In this scenario, the why isn't a cosmic mystery, but a programmer's intent. This naturally brings us to the creator hypothesis, the idea that the universe exists because it was purposefully brought into being by an intelligent, transcendent entity or deity. This offers a clear why, a divine will or purpose. While beyond the scope of scientific proof, this perspective is deeply ingrained in many cultures and belief systems. The concept of intelligent design, for instance, argues that the universe's complexity and fine-tuning point directly to a deliberate designer. Philosophically, the why delves into metaphysics, the branch of philosophy that explores the fundamental nature of reality, including cosmology, ontology, the study of being, and epistemology, the study of knowledge. It's about understanding existence itself. From an existentialist viewpoint, the universe simply exists without inherent purpose, and humanity must create its own meaning within that indifferent reality. The why shifts from a cosmic answer to a personal quest for significance. Albert Camus famously described the absurdity of existence, the conflict between humanity's innate desire for meaning and the universe's apparent silence. He suggested that true freedom comes from embracing this lack of inherent meaning, not from finding a predefined why. Perhaps the true answer to why is simply that the universe is, and its existence is the ultimate brute fact. Some argue that asking why everything exists is a category error, implying a cause for something that, by definition, has no external cause. But is our human mind even equipped to comprehend the why of ultimate reality? Our brains evolved to navigate a three-dimensional world on Earth, not to grasp concepts that might transcend space, time, and causality itself. Some answers may simply be beyond our cognitive grasp. Perhaps the very act of asking why is itself fundamental to existence, a reflection of consciousness within the universe striving to understand its own being. The universe exists, and part of its existence is the emergence of entities that question its existence. The universe might be a self-contained system, requiring no external input or explanation. Its existence is simply the unfolding of its own inherent properties and laws, a closed loop of cause and effect where the initial conditions are themselves part of the universe's definition. From this perspective, the universe isn't for anything, nor does it need a reason to exist. It simply is. This can be a liberating thought, freeing us from the endless search for an external validation or purpose, allowing us to appreciate its sheer existence. The search for why continues to evolve with every scientific discovery and philosophical insight. While we may never arrive at a definitive, universally accepted answer, the journey itself continually expands our understanding of reality and our place within it. This quest isn't just an academic exercise, it enriches our lives, challenging our assumptions and broadening our perspectives. It makes us confront the deepest questions about ourselves, our purpose, and the nature of everything that surrounds us. So, why does the universe exist? We may not have a single, simple answer, but perhaps the why isn't a destination, but the journey itself. The profound wonder of existence, the sheer fact that something is, is perhaps the most awe-inspiring truth of all. We hope this journey through the cosmos and consciousness has sparked your own wonder. If you enjoyed pondering these ultimate questions with us, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with a friend who loves deep dives, and subscribe to our channel for more explorations into the mysteries of our universe. What's your favorite theory on why anything exists? Let us know in the comments below.